Edward Thorndike was born on August 31st, 1874 in Williamsburg, Massachusetts. Edward's father was a Methodist minister at a time where science was challenging religion. Thorndike rejected his father's belief system and turned to an agnostic secularism. To Thorndike, science was the only sure foundation for social progress. At an IQ estimated to be around 200, Thorndike received his undergraduate degree from Wesleyan University and began graduate work at Harvard. At the age of 23, he completed his PhD at Columbia University. Thorndike began his professional career at the Women's College of Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio for one year. He then accepted a teaching position at Teachers College at Columbia University where he stayed until his retirement. One year after accepting his teaching job, Edward married Elizabeth Moulton and they raised four children together. Edward Thorndike's career focused on evaluating the learning process and teaching intelligence. His work influenced America's public school system and led to the development of operant conditioning within behaviorism. Operant conditioning includes learning from the consequences of our behavior. Thorndike began with testing the intelligence of animals through mazes and puzzle boxes. For the puzzle box experiment, Thorndike used mostly cats. He would place the cat in the puzzle box with a scrap of fish placed right outside the box. Thorndike then timed how long it would take the cat to, to escape. The cats would try different ways to escape and would eventually stumble upon the lever to open the cage. After escaping, Thorndike placed the cat back inside and timed how long it took the cat to escape a second time, then a third time, and a fourth, etc. The cats would learn that pressing the lever had favorable consequences and would adopt this behavior, becoming quicker and quicker at pressing the lever. Thorndike called this the law of effect and concluded three main factors. One, the law of effect is determined by consequence. Two, the law of recency requires that reoccurrence is determined by the most recent response. Three, the law of exercise states that when a stimulus is administered upon response, each subsequent response is strengthened. In other words, the law of effect states that any behavior followed by pleasant consequences is likely to be repeated, and any behavior followed by unpleasant consequences is likely to be stopped. Thorndike had originally believed that reward and punishment were equal in terms of effect, but he eventually determined that reward was far more effective and that punishment may actually lead to the repetition of an undesired behavior. For example, if a student studies for a test, they will get an A, and it will encourage them to study for tests in the future. Whereas if a student does not study for a test, they will fail and will hopefully learn from their mistake and study next time. Getting an A on a test is much more effective than failing because it has a positive outcome. Teachers should use positive rewards in their classroom to encourage good behavior and good study skills from their students. Positive rewards come in all shapes and forms. It can be as small as a piece of candy, or it could be a call home to tell the parents how well their child is doing in class. It is important to take time to learn about your students to see what form of reward they respond best to. It is also important to use repetition in teaching. Thorndike repeatedly put the cat in the box and each time the cat got faster and faster at finding the way out of the box. Think back to third grade when you were learning your multiplication tables. Each week you had a time test on a certain times tables and the more you practiced, the faster you got. I'm sure if you were asked what nine times eight is, you would be able to tell me 72 off the top of your head because you had been conditioned to immediately say the product of any common multiplication problem. This is an example of operant conditioning, which eventually led to Pavlov's classical conditioning theory. Thorndike thought that punishments were not as effective as positive rewards. This is growing more and more common in today's teaching styles. Experts say that for every bad behavior you correct, you should reward three good behaviors. 
If a child is constantly being told that they are doing something wrong, they will soon believe that they can never do anything right. Instead of constantly getting on to a student for bad behavior, you should encourage the good behaviors they are doing. While punishments are important, they should not be the main focus in your classroom. Students need a positive environment to learn and grow. Many criticize Thorndike's Law of Effect because it only looks at the physical response to the problem. Thorndike could not ask his subjects their mental process and find out their reasoning behind their behavior. This is a problem with working just with animal subjects. He could not ask the cat what changed for them that allowed them to get out of the box faster than the time before. He focused on the reaction to the stimulus. Many say this leaves a gap in his understanding to the response to the stimulus. And while reinforcements are a big part of his theory, he personally did not do a lot of study on them. It was evident in his experiments that the cats responded better to a positive reinforcement than a punishment. Edward Thorndike's work influenced America's public school system and led to the development of operant conditioning within behaviorism. Because of his work, we have learned a lot about what can motivate students.